Rabbi Marvin Tokayer served as a United States Air Force chaplain in Japan in the early 1960s. After his return to the United States and engagement to be married, the Rebbe suggested that he return to Japan and serve as its rabbi. So I wrote to the Rebbe that uh, I had agreed to go uh, to Japan and I was going there for two years and planned to be back after two years, and uh, that, that is all, okay. At this time, my father dies, suddenly and unexpectedly. In one second, he dies. I don't feel very good. My mind is going in 400 different directions. Should I cancel, not cancel, go? I didn't know I was coming or going. So, but if I'm going, I have to say goodbye to the Rebbe. After all, I'm getting on a plane in a couple weeks. I mean, uh, and so I think I made a telephone call. I said I wanted to see the Rebbe. He suggested that I go to Japan. I'm going to Japan. I want to see the Rebbe before I leave. Okay. Get an appointment right away. And I go to see the Rebbe. I come in. I look like a bum, you know, with my jacket torn, you know, unshaven, etc. He said, you're going to Japan. Yes. He said, you know, it's a great responsibility. I said, one, I'm not sure that I'm going. I have to deal with my mother. I have to say Kaddish every day. There's no minion in the shul there every day. I have to create a minion every day. And to walk in and say, hey, I must have a minion. You know, I said, it's not the easiest thing to walk in. You don't want to come in too harsh. You have to walk in, you know, step by step. And I said that my mother is pleading not to go. I said, it's not, not, so, not so easy. He said, you should go. You should go. If you want to take your mother, you can take your mother, you know, but uh, you should, don't back out. You should go. He said, you're, all, you're the only rabbi there. He said, remember, you're not only the rabbi for Japan, you're everybody's rabbi. Don't be the rabbi of the shul. Be the community rabbi. Everyone should know that you are their friend. The people who don't go to shul, they should be able to talk to the rabbi also. Don't limit yourself to the synagogue. Limit yourself to the community. You should be open to everybody and build a good school. Build a good school. If we can help you with a good school, that's very, very important. And try to have a Mishnah class, he said. Try to have, you know, teach, uh, you know, Judaism via text. He liked to take, use a text, whatever text you like, teach via text. So at least they have the text. Even if they don't like what you say, they'll have the text. Even if they don't, you know, the text is something they came home with. Just give a lecture, goes in one ear, goes out another. But if the text takes something they could take home with, he says, try to choose a text. He liked the Mishnah. He mentioned the Mishnah. I asked, do you have some advice for a young couple soon to be uh, married and you're suggesting that they go overseas, um, that they go to Japan? So he said, study Torah together. Um, and study something that will be good for both, you know, for both of you. I don't know if you use that, use that word, but I remember Mishnah and I remember Chomish and Rashi. Study it together. It will unite yourselves together. After all, you know, you're all alone there. You're far away. And this is, you know, quality time that you spend with the wife, with the husband, the husband with the wife, you know. And, and as a matter of fact, we try to do that, and it's a very, very good idea. Would recommend it to everyone. We went for two years. They were the best years of our lives. They opened up a whole world. I learned a great deal about myself as a human being, as a Jew, and as an American. And two years wasn't enough. They were such wonderful years, such fascinating years. And I was there three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, etc. And what I did not know at the time, and I did not know it for 40 years later, when I met someone whom I knew in Japan, and uh, by coincidence, I asked him, or I asked, I asked him, I said, how did I get to Japan in the first place? He said, because of me. His name was Yossel Genger. So he said, he went to the Rebbe and said to the Rebbe, you have anybody? And he found you, and he, he did well, he said. Uh, and he never told me until 40 years later. <laughs>